Stand by. Here we go. Welcome to another episode of Sonic Talk, number 294, as we head into Christmas. Uh, I'm Nick Bat, editor of sonicstate.com, and uh, this is the uh, Studio Logic Sledge, which has just um, shown up. I've just been working on um, getting it all set up and ready. Um, I haven't got it plugged in. Uh, well, I, I might play it a little bit more there. Rocking Studio Town there. Yeah, I haven't got the white balance set up right. And in the background, you can see our live set with a few, uh, couple of nice little guitars. That's the Line 6 JTC that's just come in for review as well. So we've got this and this. Uh, that one over there is the uh, Taylor GA8 acoustic, which is beautiful, but we use it for various different things in the uh, studio. So that's it. And that's over there is my monitor. Uh, not that you, you probably gathered that. And there's another one and another one. <laughs> anyway, welcome, everybody. Um, you can watch this live. You can join the chat room, uh, sonicstate.com forward slash live, which uh, should be there, yes, in the URL. And I want to say hello to everybody. I'm just turning around to make sure everything is recording. Yep, it's all happening. I want to say hello to uh, a new guest. We'll start with you, Mike, because we have uh, Mike Greig. Uh, Mike Greg. Is that how I say it? I'd say it's Greg, Mike Greg, yeah. uh, who is basically, oh, I'm now my notes have disappeared, so I'm going to have to go back to that, who is... Um, music technologist, works for Middlesbrough College, Teesside University, but also does a lot of kind of distance learning and video conferencing and kind of teaching over over the web. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I um, did quite a bit of using a, a product called Adobe Connect, actually, to teach music technology software live over the Internet. So we're, we're pioneering a couple of little ideas with that at the moment, which is which is pretty cool. I can totally relate to that, Mike, seeing as, you know, as uh, this setup here, which is held together with uh, tissue paper, string and paper clips. But it's, it's served us well over the time. Um, uh, I did a, and we got the live chat room. I don't know if you managed to get into that. Have you managed to yep, get yep, that yep, up? Yep. Right. So you got that. That's running on. If you're interested, as we're going to talk to you, you'll have to excuse us, um, chat room and anybody else who isn't operating in the micro niche that myself and Mike are operating in. Uh, that is just running on uh, uh, an IRC server on an uh, Amazon EC2 micro instance. And that's just been up for about two years and never seems to have failed us. So uh, just in case you're interested, there. I've told you now. Anyway, Mike, thank you for joining us. Your first time. We'll try and be gentle with you. I hope you got the topics all right. Yeah. I did indeed, yeah. There's lots of good topics there. So I'm looking well, forward to getting stuck in. You're too kind. You're already, yeah. But you're saying the right things. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and let's go now to... Uh, oh, we've got Gaz Williams over there in his uh, garret. Um, yeah. Gaz Williams is joining us. Oh, you're using a different mic today. What's that? 414? A 414 uh, XLS. So uh, oh, is that the, the one? No, that's the latter one. That's not the one I dropped, is it? The other day when you brought it around? <laughs> no, no, that was the Audio Technical, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gaz, of course, uh, at Gold, Gaz Goldstar on Twitter. Um, bass yep. player, music technologist, um, hmm. sort of tech guy, uh, uh, engineer, mastering guy. Um, oh, there's there's not much you don't do, is there? Oh, Dave's having... just made a noise. He's just hijacked your stream. There he goes. He's back again. Um, uh, been having fun with uh, Ableton Live 9 Beta. Which, ah, uh, well, I, before you say anything, I have uh -huh. a feeling there may be an NDA involved there. So be... No, no, no. They said, they said it's cool on Sonic State. To talk oh about right, it. yeah. Oh, maybe you can give so. us a few. Uh, right, we got the beat. We managed to sort out the beta code. Brilliant. I'll, I'll send you the email, Nick. I'll send you, and then you can confirm that. So okay, before before, okay. before you because <laughs> this is going out live, obviously. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, right, and uh, anyway, guys, thanks for joining us. And we've got there Dave Spears, obviously dead keen to get here. Just couldn't wait. But did you drop something Me? there? <laughs> you dropped the beat, didn't you? And that just brought you up to the front. <laughs> Ah, uh, probably. Yeah, you're just always dropping beats. He's just so musical. He can't help him. How are you, Dave, anyway? Are you well? I've never dropped a beat in my life, I'll have you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was gone again. Right, this is the only thing about the Skype. Um, right, I'm going to get you back. There you go. You're there. There, I got you. Um, yeah. How are you, Dave? You've got I'm your right. internet. Uh, this, yeah, which was working great until about 30 seconds ago, and then it started stammering, so... 
Ah, Maybe so you when, when you look at me puzzled when I'm uh, saying stuff to you, then you, you'll uh, we'll, we'll just have to wing it. But thanks for joining us. G- GeForce Software, of course, makers of fine musical instruments, reason rack extensions, and a number of other things. So uh, thanks for joining us. And we have as well, gosh, we have a fulsome room. We've got Mr. Mark Tinley, who's over there holding a cat by the list of the... Are you kind of uh, adopting some kind of Bond villain stance there? If you speak, then I can probably get your, your screen up. What are you doing to that cat <laughs> to make it I make that noise? She makes a noise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you should condone that sort of behaviour. Mark, don't do it again. We'll get into trouble. Can you can you touch a can you touch a can you touch a bagpipe? Uh, listen, I'm not sure that that's wise. Hello. That sounds like a, a very... Um, that doesn't sound... That it looks like a pretty dubious thing to be doing on live broadcast. Yeah, it's... Uh, anyway, Mark, you've got some sort of fancy um, business going on there. What's what's this? You've got a new mic? No. No. Just got a pop shield, haven't you? Wrapped it around your Skype phone. eBay for 99p. Brilliant. It's a proper stopper. A proper popper stopper. Not a bit of old tight. I can tell, by the way, that you're not... Um, um, you're not popping... And the, the, your cat wasn't popping either, but I'm hoping it wasn't pooping either when you squeezed it. But uh, it, what you probably do need is a poop shield rather than a pop shield. Exactly, for the cat. <laughs> yeah. I'm really rambling now. Let's We better get on with some topics. I, I mean, discovered Ma- something really bizarre. Yeah. I clicked on a button in the in the chat room. It said, pop out window. And I've got the whole chat. I can see what's going on in the chat room. I didn't know I could do that. I've only been doing this for like, oh, I can't. I, is that something <laughs> I did or something they did? Because I, I can't remember. It's oh, been it's such in, a long time since I've looked at it. In your HTML, it just opens it in a new window. Ah. Well, oh, congratulations. Never seen it. Somebody's typing. Want to watch that? Not me. Yeah, I know. It's the new boy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, let's get. Uh, let's start off. Uh, happy birthday, MIDI. In fact, I have a video to play for this. Um, it's not really a happy birthday MIDI video. It's more something else. Um, let sense. me just... First, let's hear it's some MIDI jitter. notes at 120 beats per minute off of the JP8080. That's not the tightest timing that you'll ever hear, but it's not good bad, enough though. for me, and right. I can't really tell that the notes are jittering there. Now let's listen to the exact same stream of notes coming out of Sunriser on the iPad. That's ghastly. Right, I mean, obviously I don't want to play too much of that because it's probably quite painful, on, uh, especially on earbuds, but uh, it was for me. But that, that was really to illustrate uh, this article that uh, we posted a link to on the Sonic State site, which is basically uh, by Geert, Beaver, uh, Geert Bevin, who, who is uh, a kind of expo- one of the Eigen Labs guys. Uh, if I switch to it here... Uh, MIDI jitter might be ruining your live performance and he talks about the way that MIDI jitter is working and uh, obviously the difference between uh, the the fact that the jitter being the delay between events being variable so we end up with this kind of as you heard there on the um, the the second example which is an INS IIS Sunriser and that was uh, really that wasn't particularly a bad example it was just so that we could uh, demonstrate but it's quite an interesting um article about that and i didn't realize it was quite so bad to be perfectly honest and and and, and also when we consider midi is well it's not quite 30 years old today because uh what the standard the first synth came out 30 years ago i think last week but the standard wasn't formalized until sometime next in the summer but midi jitter is a kind of a big deal i'm going to go to you mike first because you teach midi technology i mean is this something that you have to uh, is it a module? Is it something that you kind of you're aware of? I mean, you must you must know about it. I mean, is, there are various synth, various pieces of software packages that don't have this. I'm able to live being one of them, and I know you enjoy that. So, uh, any thoughts? Yeah, well, luckily, actually, this isn't one of the modules that I I teach actually. But what a good, <laughs> yeah, but a good colleague of mine actually Hole teaches in one. this. Yeah, he does. Um, but one of the things I found quite interesting here, though, was that when I scrolled down on that page was that Logic Pro actually came into one of the categories that had a problem with the jitter. Now, if I remember rightly, Logic was always renowned for having pretty tight MIDI um, back in the days of the eMagic, you know, when eMagic used to run that company. So I'm very surprised to actually yeah, didn't see they, Logic. They actually, they actually made a, a special time-stamped MIDI interface, didn't they? 
Yeah, I think it was the United 8 or something like that. I think Mark will know more about that because it was Mark that actually got me into Logic. Yeah, um, so um, the list of apps that are kind of, according to this article, I might say, uh, AU Lab, Apple, uh, Plug Bidual, Digital Performer 8.01, DSP Quattro, Jambalaya, uh, Logic Pro 9.18, Main Stage, which is quite disturbing considering you actually want to use that live. Uh, again, this is a, an independent article. I don't, I, I can't verify it exactly. Max MSP, Rack Studio One and VST Law, whereas uh, Audio Mulch, Cubase 6.5.4, Eigen, um, D which is the Eigen Labs uh, environment, Live 8.3.4, Machine Reaper, which is good to know, and Vienna Ensemble. Mark, you, you were handed the baton there. Um, is that true? I mean, it, I don't know where the logic... The logic uh, I thought it vid- used to be really tight, um, because C-Lab Notator was tight on the Atari, and Cubase was all over the place, from what I remember, and then it just kind of evolved into Logic, which was tight. But I think the problem is switching to OS X from OS 9. Oh, uh, really? So, you think that? So uh, none of, I've never had, well, on OS 9, all of my MIDI always worked really quite nicely and things were, were vaguely in time, you know. <laughs> well, um, but, actually, Hellosaurus in the chat room says, isn't it going to depend on a lot on your interface and driver? And I think yeah. the thing about what uh, what Git did in this was he went via the IAC bus in and out and, and via an audio interface. So I think he kind of took the shortest route, at least as I understand it. Um, I don't know, Dave Spears, you're a software developer. Is this something that you kind of like to see standardised? Because, I mean, it seems to me that in this day and age, we should at least have a 30-year-old standard that works um, consistently, right? Yep, definitely. I mean, it's been it's been hit and miss with various manufacturers for years. Oh, we seem to have lost you. Or has that just lost the whole Skype? U20 was a horrendous lag. And then it only kind of smartened up when they used one processor for the keyboard scanning and the MIDI stuff, and then another one to do the actual work of the synth. Oh, what internal to so, a keyboard? Yeah. yeah. Well, the yeah, Roland S7. Normally, you had like one processor processor. dealing with everything. Right. Ah, okay. Sorry, Mark. Oh, you cut out, I think. So I talked over you. <laughs> Sorry. You carry on. The Roland S770 was just that was just mental. The MIDI timing on that. If you put sixteenth note hi hats out of one output and uh, the rest of your drum kit out of another output, and then you listened to the 16th note hi hats. It wasn't that they were late; it's that they instead of playing 16th notes, it was playing completely random shit, and it was just all over the place. I mean, that's terrible, really. I mean, it does. I mean, because this MIDI timestamp, I remember Electron kind of made uh, a big deal about. It. They made a special time time stamped box, didn't they? That they were really kind of thrilled about. That that had, you know, this is very tight MIDI. So, and I'm guessing it must have something to do with the driver as well. I mean, Gaz, you use um, Reaper, right? I mean, do you do you use it for MIDI a lot? I mean, have you noticed anything, no. anything specifically tight? I don't use Reaper hardly at all for MIDI. Uh, I use Reaper as my audio, as an audio recorder, really. MIDI, uh, Cubase, and a- Ableton Live, I think. Um, you've made the right choices there by the looking of that list, anyway. <laughs> uh, well, Cubase, you've been able to enable the timestamp as an option, haven't you? Uh, In, I don't know that. I don't use Cubase, but... Um, um, I'm not sure if that is enabled by default. I'd have to, I'd have to research that one. Um, but it's kind of interesting. I mean... This is mainly for sequenced timing, though, isn't it? As yeah, opposed to yeah, yeah. Of... It's not. It's not audio stuff. It's just that I the. Mean, well, what I mean, because like if main stage is on the naughty list, uh, the show that I did this year, we used main stage for with two players who were playing very complex baroque style parts. Baroque and roll, I think you have to say in that. <laughs> now we had some problems with some polyphony problems but we never had latency timing problems so no but, but that's they they would have been very sensitive to that i'm guessing wouldn't they very 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 sensitive to that yeah so you know that's but as i say that's not sequence that's real time sort of you know pianist kind of playing but um you know so it's just i wonder you know about this test uh, it doesn't seem anywhere near kind of detailed enough, I think. Um, he is coming out of the Macs, uh, the, the, his MacBook's audio, his optical output, so he's not even using a sound card, and then he's kind of taking a loop back of that in. 
So it could uh, be any it could be any number of other factors in there. Do you think? I, I mean, it, it does. I mean, at the end of the article, it does say that uh, he did get kind of uh, it was researched by Geert Bevin uh, this month, thanks to Mike Milton, Roger Lynn, John Lambert, Jim Chapman, and Duncan Foster, and Ron, for for proofreading and suggestions. Uh, so I mean, I'm guessing yeah. some of those people would have probably you know. He's very to- open though. I think the article is a great article, and he's very open for any suggestion or any, you know, illumination in any way. So I think uh, I think it's definitely a watch this space regarding Geert's, uh Yeah, I, uh, I suppose the the wider question is, you know, with this thirty year old standard, why are we still having to think? You know, why is timing even an issue nowadays? I mean, it seems yeah. kind of crazy that we're even that it's even you a know, discussion. I, you know where it started going wrong? Actually, it started going wrong with USB. So before we started sending things down USB, we were sending them out of serial ports, weren't we, on the Mac, the, the little printer port and the serial port, and the timing on MIDI was really tight on those. So I don't know that it was actually the switch to OS 9 as much as it was the switch from those little serial ports to USB. Because I think USB gives priority to all sorts of things, because OS X is sitting there going like, Oh, I wonder if he's going to plug a camera in. I'll just check the bus to see if he's plugged the camera in, or a printer, or, or uh, I don't know, a headset, or you know. And it's 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 kind of monitoring that port for all sorts of stuff that might potentially happen. So I think that's got to screw with your MIDI timing, hasn't it? Oh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Mm. Um, right, yeah, USB uh, was the biggest culprit. I mean, the serial port was a much better. I know, Mike. Are you kind of uh, uh, you're a live user, right? Yeah, I I just swear by Ableton Live, and I've I've never had any issues with that program, and I'm glad to see it's in that list because I would get a bit upset if I saw it in the other list of it not being a good a good product as far as this concerned. Just going back to that topic to do with USB though, it was I always found it interesting why manufacturers were wanting to uh, bundle devices that were audio or sound cards with MIDI on the same on the same interface with it being USB. Um, Because I had never found anything good with that. And especially, I have great difficulty with my my virus TI. I love the synth. I think it's beautiful. It's really nice. But when I use the total integration with that, and again, it's over USB 1, when I'm using that as a sound card as well as um, putting MIDI across it, I've had nothing but issues. And it's definitely on a high contender of suffering from jitter, definitely. Hmm. I wonder if um, the adoption of Thunderbolt is going to solve the problem because we've got so much more bandwidth to play with. I guess it just depends on how that data is going in and out and whether there are going to be any MIDI interfaces. I mean, because, you know, frankly, if you could run a monitor and a hard drive off that port at the same time, MIDI Hmm. isn't going to trouble it too much, is it, I wouldn't imagine. But again, Hmm. um, we haven't kind of got there yet. It just seems... It's got to be down to how the clock gets to the other end of the cable, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's a, you know, if it's late, that's okay. If you've got latency, then that's okay. Sound yeah. does that anyway. If I put my guitar amp on the other side of a hall and I start playing the guitar, I'm going to hear the sound way after I've hit the strings, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, we can adjust for that. But it, when, it's, when it's actually changing like that, and messing with the musical performance. Well, That's yeah, because you've you've es- essentially you've lost what you what you played is not what you get. And I I must admit I noticed that a lot. You know, just playing stuff in over various you. I just kind of think, well, it doesn't. I mean, I know I I know my opinion of myself while I'm actually <laughs> playing is much greater than what it actually sounds like when I play it back. But it's never it's not quite that disparate. <laughs> I wouldn't say. I don't know. I mean, Dave, do, uh, do you think that there's a lot to do with? Um, I mean, drummers must be very sensitive, um, well, should be very sensitive to this. I mean, do, what do you find is the best path for kind of making sure that it's as tight as possible? Just forgetting about MIDI altogether or what? There have been times where, certainly with um, Rick Smith, you know, we've cl- clocked yep. a 909, which has been simply clocked versus a, a plug-in that's, you know, uses a 909 kick. And the only way to do it is... Uh, you know, properly, and he can hear these things over a large PA. He can hear the difference in timing. Whereas as a drummer, I think I'd probably play around with it a little bit. You know, you're aware of very microscopic but subtle things, and you can kind of play it. You know, it's kind of fun, really, for a drummer to play against and around these things. Yeah. But for somebody who's just got that ear, he will know whether it's, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 milliseconds out. And it's got the air for him, it. the groove's about everything. So, yeah. It's interesting, yeah. isn't it? We did talk about the idea of uh, 
people, you know, just going back to CV and gate for absolute rock solid stuff. And and that maybe that's the answer. Maybe we just utilize our firewire stuff. We bypass MIDI completely, and we just for, for triggering external sounds, we just just go straight into CV or gate and just go that route mm. rather than uh, using MIDI at all. I mean, maybe that would be the answer. Which well, is why that CV to MIDI thing the other day, the other week was very interesting. With the Moog thing, wasn't it? Yeah, and again, you know, uh, there, there, there would be, there would po possibly be uh, more that could be done with that. But I also have to say that I don't really experience that much of an issue with Logic. Right. You know, if, if you really start loading the, I mean, I've got Uniter, yeah, Uniter Eight and whatnot here. If you really start overloading things, but I mean, compared to what it was, I remember years ago trying to use a. It was a little Korg thing, like an SQ1 sequencer. And it was utterly, utterly horrendous to the point where you couldn't do anything meaningful. Mm. I can't even remember what it was called. I keep thinking it's an SQ8 or something, but it's amazing. And like I say, with some of those Roland synths, even though they're kind of revered sonically, in terms of the MIDI timing, it was so all over the place that anything yeah. now is an improvement on that. Mm. Mm, okay. I had a I had a Fender Chroma Polaris, which was a really <laughs> nice synth, but it was multi timbral, and it was like one of the very first, like 1983 Fender multi timbral synth, six part multi timbral. I think as soon as you went into multi timbral mode and threw too many things at it, it just was like you know, keyboard player falling down the stairs. Time it was just <laughs> mental. Well, you get you still do get that with certain things. I mean, and I remember that you know, for all the great sounds that the M Audio Venom has under it, when you go into multi timbral mode and start switching parts and patches, it just kind of goes, I can't deal with it, leave me alone, I'm busy. <laughs> but um, so there are still culprits, um, but uh, yeah, interesting and uh. Apparently, yeah. So MIDI is um, is going to be where is it? The actual MIDI specification wasn't published till August 1983. So uh, the actual, but the but but the Prophet 600 was the first synth with MIDI came in December 82. So that's the 30 years of the first instrument, but not of the actual formal MIDI specification. Fact finders just in case you wanted to know. Right, I'm going to uh, hit an ad, and we're going to come back because there's been quite a lot of talk about logic this week, um, whether or it is or isn't, and how it's doing. And uh, there's some discussion there, I believe, to be had. But here, I want to say uh, hello and welcome to our sponsor. The sponsor is... Uh, Yamaha, uh, they've got a world of applications, absolutely tons of them, uh, 20 and counting, um, possibly more. So if you're interested in running any kind of musical stuff on the iOS, you want to check out some of this stuff. We've got the performance and play, it's got arpeggiator drum pads. There's actually a new mod version of that, which has got a synth built into it as well, um, which is called uh, Synth Arp. There's also a number of different applications for controlling your mocks. Motif XF, S90X, S70XS, Motif XS, and Rack XS, giving you edit, uh, voice control, uh, parameter control, and also performance control. So you can, if you like, you can tweak the multi. So you've got levels, EQs, pan, effects control. Again, there's quite often X, Y, and deeper control that's just easier to get to. So you can continue to use the performance controllers on the actual keyboard for different things. Uh, again, performance edit has X, Y pad. There's a whole ton of things. And another one that we looked at on Sonic Touch Setlist Organizer. It's a great little uh, utility for sending out MIDI program changes to up to five devices in sections of songs. You can note, note you can annotate, and you can add photographs, all that kind of thing. It just helps you maybe kind of work on your live system and control your MIDI rig from there. So once again, we want to say thank you very much to Yamaha for their continued sponsorship of the show. We very much appreciate it. Check them out at the App Store or uk.yamaha.com. Well, I've got to get that in before it loops around again, because otherwise it looks terrible. Right, the next one, this is obviously um, the the logic story. There seems to have been a lot of rumours around this week, and I have to hold my hand up. I did sort of report on the reporting. I got an awful lot of flack for it, but a hell of a lot of page views. Um, and this is a can of worms that basically uh, this was reported initially on... Um, 
I think it was Pro Tools Expert, uh, uh, they were talking about the fact that the European sort of pro audio department had been decimated, and that was a word that was used, and has been bandied about a lot. I mean, essentially, I think that, but what I can gather is there's been some sort of natural wastage, and the, t- the pro audio team is still based in Cupertino, I believe, uh, and uh, it's come to the point where sort of, uh, well, there's there's just been counter rumor and rumor um but i mean it was an interesting concept in that you know basically you can't get away from the bottom line is there hasn't been a major update in logic for three years and i know gaz you don't feel particularly uh, inclined <laughs> to enjoy logic but i wonder whether or not you know it, considering that there was maybe a, to- a topic in there apart from yep. just anybody bashing what what those what those features might be that you'd like to see and i don't know mike hmm. you teach Music technology. What kind, do you do? You use Logic in the, in the studio in the uh, in the university. I mean, how does it work for you? Yeah, we use we use Logic in our one of our modules. Um, predominantly, we've been using Pro Tools because we're a, an Avid certified centre. So there's a big push to make sure that everybody gets through their their Avid 101 and 110. I think it's now known as the Certified User Exam. Um, and Logic was more or less picked up by students more doing um, sound and music to picture and scoring um, projects and things. Um, But we do quite a bit of logic evening classes as well. And um, I I love logic. You know, I think probably one of the things I struggle with more than anything else is when I sit down to do anything with music, I have Cubase, Logic, Reason, Ableton Live, and, you, and you're beginning to think which ones that you want to start with. Um, really, with this topic, I, I did a bit of research a while ago into, into Logic, and I found that they'd acquired um, a company in Italy called Kima, um, not Redmatica, that's yeah, what they're called. Right. Yeah. Auto um, sampling has got lots of very clever things it can do from that point of view. I know Dave, Dave used to use it a lot. Fantastic. And that KeyMap Pro software, um, with its intelligent intelligent harmonic resynthesis and things involved there, as well as allowing you to be able to create these fantastic multi-sampled patches for your, your sampler. Now, that quite quite excites me because the EXS I find in Logic is a good sampler in, in par with um the sampler in, in Ableton. But as far as um, comparing it with something like Contact is concerned, it's, it kind of lags quite a bit. So I, I'd be really interested to see what they're going to do with with that type of that type. That's of an plugin. interesting point. Does Redmatica? Uh, does anyone know? Does Redmatica translate between formats? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That might be an interesting kind of idea. So, Dave, um, Dave I know that you you uh, you use Redmatica quite a lot when you were doing when you're making samples for your in- virtual instruments, right? I use KeyMap. Almost every day, ah. which is why I was gutted when it vanished. You know, when they, I think it was called an Acquihire, which was basically, you know, they've they bought the company, the company so they could, on a, yeah, so they could get and the coders. I've not heard anything from um, from the owner ever since. From the owner since then, but that's kind of on my wish list. That you know, some really really tight integration, because what he'd done, as Mike kind of alluded to, what he'd done was so beautifully integrated with the ESX24 and other stuff as well. You could output it as contact or... Actually, I shouldn't be telling anybody this because it was, was kind of my trade secret a little bit. Ah, okay. Um, Auto-looping algorithms, all sorts of really smart, intelligent stuff going on in there. He was always kind of my first port, port of call at NAM. So, yeah, for me, that and MIDI timing. But this whole thing, I don't know. You know my feeling on this kind of reportage i think what happens is you have a company like apple who are quite secretive we have to be reasonably secretive at times because we're so tiny and we can't field a gazillion requests and what happens is you announce that you are doing something and before you know it you've got a million emails from people going how much when what's the upgrade path and we do the real work first before we think about the finances and all that other stuff that always comes secondary so all of those things become a real distraction and when i saw this kind of hit my first yeah all right it's been a while since an update actually my biggest request 
is that they don't break anything of ours when they do the update. Yeah, well, that makes that makes <laughs> yeah. a lot of sense. I was thinking about this the other day because uh, I've just reviewed the Max 49 uh, Akai keyboard, which is the one with the CV and gate. And it's got this brilliant implementation of touch faders where you've got four banks and you and, and LEDs behind them. So you just set the settings and then you switch banks and they, the, you know, they all change. And it's great. And it's got Mackie and Huey emulation. And I was working in Reaper, working in Logic. And the thing about Logic that just got me was the mixer and the track window are not really Related. So you can have multiple instances of the same track object, and when you hit mute or solo, it mutes the object in the mixer, which you can't see from the arranged window. And I'd like to see things like that tied together because it's really confusing. So That's you might thing. have an object in solo in Logic, and you just don't know whether it is or not from the front page. You wouldn't have a clue because it's just it's not there. So mm -hmm. the things like that, where you know, just in obvious and, and workflow where you can very easily filter because in Logic, because you've got a MIDI and an audio environment and a virtual instrument environment, you can have massive, massive track counts and you've got submixes, you know, folders. The ability to be able to do clever stuff like displaying sets of tracks based on, you know, keywords or all the tracks that send to AUX1 or, you know, things like that, just much more dynamic mixer um, visualization would really make a lot of sense to workflow for me. Gaz, I see you're nodding mm. there. Well, I mean, it is, as I've often mentioned, I think it's so extremely long in the tooth logic. And, uh, you know, I mean, like um, Studio One version two has just gone to two, version 2.5 um, the last few days. And uh, that's like a free update for anyone who's got Studio uh, Studio One. Uh, and it's an amazing update, actually. And it sort of further sort of highlights this thing of logic just been in the in the dark ages you know i mean there's so many it's been so many advances in the last say maybe four or five years uh that whatever happens when the you know and if the new logic comes out it's got to play catch up quite a lot i mean mm -hmm. uh, an example of that i've mentioned this many times i think samplitude was the first one to do it but the whole thing about an object being able to draw uh, yeah you mentioned that plugins plugins per object that kind of thing yeah, I mean, you know, well, and and frankly, VST support, you know, because that's one of the things. Another thing that I was kind of really conscious yeah. of, I was uh, the the Max Forty Nine comes with this Connect system, which is kind of like the Auto Map, so it, it will wrap VST wrap, but it won't wrap, wrap audio units. So I was I got this bizarre situation where I'm demonstrating the. Um, the Huey and the Mackie control in Logic because it's easier to demonstrate, but I can't demonstrate Connect because I can't really, I can't access any of those VST plugins, and it just seems a bit kind of bonkers. And I I don't know whether that you know, and it seems like now lots of uh, I mean you can do VST and audio units inside Live, right? If I am I right in thinking that? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. and in most other doors. I mean the problem being that obviously Logic and Apple have a vested kind of interest and i wonder if they'll be able to get over that and go actually it doesn't matter let's just do it or whether they're too tied to kind of making sure that they've got this close that's the problem they've got them well mark <laughs> alluded to that didn't he yeah. in an email this week mark and mountain line ah experiences. yes exactly um i don't know mark what do you think i mean do you think um, what would you like to see i mean you are a logic user aren't you so i mean it would be fair to to, to ask what you would <laughs> you know what would you like this big update to address you know what would the what would it be <laughs> If anything, I mean, I mean, I uh, let me see. I mean, I there's certain things that I do which I could imagine could uh, be created in much quicker ways. So uh, integration between clips and the some more integration between uh, recorded clips and the sampler would be fun. But being able to mess around, you know, what Logic's never had actually a proper pitch shifter, actually. Uh, yeah. Radius. It's an extra, but Radius is on there and it's pretty good. It's an extra? Yeah, yeah. maybe they'll integrate it now. I'm sure Apple can afford to license an algorithm or two. I mean, yeah, well, that would make sense. But, I mean, I, uh, one of the things that I, I can't do is sing in tune, okay? Well, so you want Logic to do that for you, right? No, I mean, <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm exaggerating slightly. <laughs> I, want, I want to be able to sing as in tune as the records that I'm hearing in the charts, which have probably all been tuned. So one of the ah, ways so to... What? what? Auto-tuning, yeah. Yeah, So, but I don't want to use auto-tune. I want to be able to play the notes on a MIDI keyboard. So the way I get around that is I dump stuff out of Logic into a Roland V-Synth, and then I robotize it, and then I play stuff on the MIDI keyboard, and... You know, there's several steps to doing that. Or I can dump stuff out of Logic and I can put it in contact and I can robotize it and then I can play MIDI notes on the MIDI keyboard. So there's, 
you know, but it's still quite a long-winded thing to go and find a chunk of audio and then to cut it out and then save it and then to put it into a sampler and then to line it up and then correct, make the put the correct MIDI notes back in to trigger it off and blah 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 blah. Wouldn't it be good if you could just take a piece of audio, double click on it, and I'm talking about Melodyne now, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, so, well, essentially, but then, you know, Cubase, <laughs> but the thing is, that's not unreasonable because Cubase has that feature, that sort of functionality but built in, you know, so. I want I want more integration between the audio and the MIDI so I can actually manipulate the audio with a MIDI keyboard, I suppose, that, and, and naturally, so that I can take a, a vocal line and I can go, actually, I didn't want it to go la, 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 I wanted it to go la, 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 and I can just play that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I'm totally with. It. I mean, and the thing is, is what what the, I guess the thing is, you know, Apple have their way of doing things, and that's also fine. I mean, the the thing that really got me was that it was almost sacrilegious. The fact that I was making any kind of implication of criticism in the article I wrote seemed to rile people, and I'm just like, well, what the hell, you know? I mean, it's not like Mother Teresa. I mean, they've got more money than most nation states. I mean, there's really no reason why we can't start criticizing them for not behaving in a certain way. I don't care yeah. who the hell they are. You know, it's not like they treat me with any respect. I, I mean, I got really bloody angry about that. Actually but I, I won't go on about it but I think I, so So therefore so did you start this off no I didn't start it off I reported on it and it just built, built some more momentum and it was a really big story for a few days I think more importantly yeah it was speculation but I, I, I mean I also said actually you know that was the article that said but there are people saying that Logic X is coming and that's great and I'm, I'm thinking what is that they're going to have to do something really big to make up for this three year gap you know and it's going to have to be a bit more than Red Matica Incorporation Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely. Gonna, they'll make it all glossy, won't they? Because if you notice that they, um, I, I upgraded, I bought a new Macintosh and, I bought, um, and I've got Mountain Lion on it. And I've noticed that Mountain Lion just looks like my iPhone. Yeah. So I think that any new version of Logic is probably going to end up with like loads of iPhone-like features on it. Maybe I'll be able to swipe things around on the screen and stuff. I'll be able to mm. swipe little guitars across the screen. I'm sure you'll be able to do stuff like that. And there may even, yeah, I'm, I'm, undoubtedly. And we've got to do something with all those extra CPU cycles, surely. <laughs> well, oh, interesting. Yeah. What's that it's... about as well? I mean, I, <laughs> I bought a, a 10, what is the, those big wide monitor things? Uh, 1080 yeah. monitor. HD 1080. monitor. Uh, you know, 1920 by 1080, and um, and I downloaded the new version of iTunes, which is iTunes 11, and that came up on the screen, and all the fonts gone like huge now. So all the information that I used to be able to get on my screen in front of me in OS 9. Let's go back there for a moment. <laughs> using the Monaco 8 or Monaco 9 <laughs> font, nine point font. Um, it's it's all like big and blurry now, and it's all nice furry rounded edges and everything. But it's just like I want the information. I don't I don't care what it looks like as much as the other people do, perhaps. Well, yes, I I, I mean I agree. I I think hopefully we won't get the uh, the consumer electronics approach applied to what is essentially a professional audio construction well, and, you know, worry, environment. That's the thing that I think people worry about. Uh, you know, people have been moaning about pre uh, Final Cut X and all of that stuff. Whereas I actually, I mean, I, I didn't really use Final Cut Pro at all, but I I started demoing and using Final Cut X and I, I thought it's great. I mean, I really, I mean, if it wasn't 200 quid and I something that I would use every day, I, I'd probably buy it. But I mean, mm. I, I have no great need for it other than, you know, it runs on my Mac and it's a, it's a drag having to boot into Windows when I want to video ed edit video. But yeah. Gaz, you wanted to come in there. Um, uh, oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my place. You lost your thread. I can, yes, come, um, I, yeah. I can uh, come back to you, but uh, let's, I mean, let's just can assume. Can I finish my rant about screens? Then? <laughs> I'll go on there, Mark. Yeah, why not? Because, I, because I've got two computers hooked up to this new, huge, great big screen. And on one computer, I've got Mountain Lion running. And I switched to the other computer, I've got a G4 power PC running OS 9. And when OS 9 came up on the screen, it got like little icons in the corner. And the 1920 by 1080 on OS 9 is massive. You could put like a whole Bible of information on the screen in front of you. So why, why do we have to have these great big blurry fonts? And why can't I change that? 
Um, I really couldn't say, but I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure. I'm sure Dave, if he wanted to get into the uh, Open GL uh, libraries for font displays and uh, the uh, GPU stuff, he could probably give you some some pointers. But I, I'm 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 suspecting perhaps. I think he's... there is a way to do it. Actually, I've just remembered something from hacking a Dell Mini and trying to get the screen resolution different. I think I might know how to do it. Okay, well, I'm happy for you there. That's good. I'm glad that's going to work out. I'll talking about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, interesting. I mean, so let's, I mean, again, I didn't really want this to turn into sort of a bitching session about Logic because I, 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 most of my professional music work has been done in Logic. You know, that's my environment, has been my environment of choice across the board. You know, I've done, you know, arguably my best or worst or crassest work in that. You know, I haven't done anything else outside of that that's ever seen the light of day. And I, what, I, I'd love to have that environment familiar and you know available to me assuming i ever make a record again mm. the, yeah. uh, gaz i remember yes what i was going to say um you know when you when you look at garage band on the ipad and the amount of amazing innovation that's going on in that and you think about garage band what, what that could actually be if it was much much just much deeper but but taking that as a sort of as a starting point rather than the logic thing i do wonder if that's what we're going to see do you see what i mean a more like a evolution of garage band maybe mm. I, I think that's the fear but i don't know mm. that they would be so i mean that you know, I, I, know I don't think it takes a, I, a team of crack audio coders to make something better let me, you know, the let me say though nick though it's just that some of the fantastic things in garage band on the ipad it's, a, it's specifically on the ipad it's a different thing from the garage band on the mac i guess but there's a there is a definite there's a definite way in which it's going and i wonder though i mean people are going oh no oh no no you see i hate logic so i, I don't care um, <laughs> <laughs> full disclosure <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just, um, but I just thought that it, it could actually be quite exciting that if it did go that way, you know, it could be quite like a like a new like a new. Oh, what's happened? We lost something. Have we got a another Skype? Fr- oh, bit of a Skype freeze. Sorry about that. Carry Adam on, Gaz. Frozen his Skype account. <laughs> Gone in there and cut his cable. Um, there's there's ways of interacting now with music that is actually it is advancing it is going in a different direction and i wonder if we do need to be prepared for that you know it could it's not necessarily a bad thing if if actually the creation of music is the goal you know yeah well of course i mean you know the, i think the thing is is uh, as i've said before you know music musical Musicians, for all of their kind of uh, liberal uh, creative ways, are essentially very conservative with a small c when it comes to change. You know, I mean, we all are because we're scared that somehow a change will rob us of our mojo and we will be unable to create the amazing works we have in quite the same way. It's such a fragile existence, creative creativity that, 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 you know, that's what you can't... That, I think that's essentially what people worry about. I mean, there are a lot of people who just worry about it because um they don't make any music anyway but you know if you're actually making music you know there are people who have lots and lots of time invested in their door of choice and any major change could massively interrupt their workflow or mid album or you know there could be any number of reasons why it could it could be a big problem for them so i mean those are the people that get uppity uh, and lots of people get uppity on their behalf perhaps for different reasons but that essentially that's kind of you know the the problem but we do we are oh I was just say we have got the option, you see, to feature freeze just to go yeah, right. Of course let's we do. Of course we do. In, and let's just switch it off from everything else now. Yeah, but I, I mean, we can, we could, we could, you know, we could probably go around this subject for a long time, and that's one of the reasons why that po- story was so popular. Um, but yes, I think, can I just say one more thing? About yes, Mark. This? And the biggest <laughs> problem with any of this stuff, and especially logic, actually, and I had to go and buy another computer because of this, is that the upgrade path kills off some of the songs you've recorded in the past so i've got songs that i recorded maybe six or seven years ago perhaps on an earlier version of logic that won't load in this latest version and i had to go out and buy a g4 power pc mac so that i could access those songs then i had to try and work out what plugins i had and which versions of the plugins i had and we're kind of drawn into this upgrade path where we're constantly upgrading our computers and as we do that 
all these bits and pieces get killed and you think, oh, it's only that plugin. I probably haven't used that very much. I mean, for example, I've got the Lexicon um, bundle, the Pro Reverb bundle and the Pro Effects bundle on my machine. And I've got it on iLock and I've upgraded to Mountain Lion. And I went to do some a song which had the Lexicon reverbs in and it just can't see the iLock for that particular plugin. So I'm sure it will get fixed eventually. So I have to put that song on hold for a moment. But, you know, it, it, I think well, the, if yeah. you're going to upgrade, you have to upgrade like your machine and your software and your plugins and everything. And then, you know, bubble wrap the old machine. That seems to be what some people do. But, I, you know, where do I keep that? Yeah, well, <laughs> that's, that's, that's you keep. Or just finish the stuff. Finish what? The song? Finish the song first and then, you know. No, but I'm so brilliant. I had to go back to this amazing song that I wrote that all of those six or seven people loved. <laughs> <laughs> to remix uh, it. If you're a big band and you've like got, you know, a million people that want to hear a slightly different version of something you did 10 years ago, how the hell are you going to pull that up? Mm, that's an interesting Should point. It, Shouldn't we? we? That's what the others had to do. With the Olympic stuff. Yes. Sorry, Dave. That's what... Dave. No, that's what, exactly what the unders had to do with the Olympic stuff, you know, particularly with that um, athletes parade. All of that stuff had to come from old computers that had been sitting around for yonks in uh. storage. Old stuff resurrected. Apple love deprecating things. That's my biggest criticism of them as a company, apart from the uh, Black Polar See? Neck Brigade. That this whole <laughs> deprecation of features. I've just had an email from one of the programmers today, John, who's just explaining a load of things that have vanished in Mountain Lion as far as coding's concerned. So that's probably going to cost us, I don't know, days, weeks. Who knows? Mm. Ooh. Ghastly business. Um, uh, I, I, I really feel we should probably can I, draw this topic a, to an end. Can uh, I just say the last thing? I just thought just it just occurred to me, though. If we're working on a big album, shouldn't we just take a, a, a like a, a backup of our operating system at the same time as we finish the yeah, album? That's fine, but the operating system, you know, that it won't. The, the old operating system won't run on the hard drive, drive like on, a kind of yes, but it won't run on the current hardware. Ah, so that that could work, but I mean, you can't run anything in Rosetta now on mount on the latest hardware. Um, right. You just can't uh, do it. The, the processor structure will okay. not allow you to do that. So, so it's a good idea. Um, maybe the way to do it is to create a VM. If you could do that, you could just create a virtual machine, and then you know, by the time when you come back, it's like cryogenically freezing your system. Yeah. So that when you come back good. to it, you know, the the, the the powerful computer that's going to be available in ten years, be able to run that virtually, no problem at all, and it all yes. running fine. But you know, that's a, that's a pipe that, dream, isn't that's it? That's what we need to look at, though. I think that's a good idea. Okay, right. I'm going to stop. We're drawing a line under this topic now, and I want to go to something a bit lighter because um, God knows we need it. So here <laughs> is uh, this. This was a, a, um, a little piece. I can play a bit of video, I think. Um, is it going to play? This is uh, Katia Rouge, or Rouge, behind what is a massive billboard sized picture of uh, an MS 20 or 10. I can't tell from there. That sorry, was that, that, that was a trot. Was that a trot? It was, uh, sorry, I got a phone call in the middle of that, <laughs> and I said to the person, "If it's life or death, I'm going to have to hang up." No, can I just no, no, really? I'm in the middle of doing a live broadcast. Yeah, but can I? No, you can't. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Good grief, some people, eh? Anyway, that was um, Katya Rug, who has made a uh, done, done well a number of different um, uh, exhibitions based on. It started off as a sort of series of parties based on sort of lovers of synths, and. Uh, <clears throat> And now um, she's basically uh, got a um, an exhibition or a series of exhibitions where she's been shown. She showed them at uh, South by Southwest. There's a whole bunch of them, um, and they're just like absolutely massive pictures of synthesizers, which in my book has got to be a good thing, right? 
I mean, you know, you can't say fairer than that. And I, so I just thought, well, they, they all look rather lovely. And uh, people seem to get together and have these sort of very um, uh, high society parties with the synthesizers in the background. So there's obviously a zeitgeist going on there, continuing with the German theme. And uh, I wondered whether or not, um, you know, bearing that in mind, what is the most beautiful, artistically or aesthetically pleasing synthesizer you can consider? And Dave's looking all, all sort of expectant and keen to go on this, so uh, have you finished <laughs> Have you finished what you're eating? Are you ready to go, Dave? Yeah, sour launch. skittles, they're great. Um, <laughs> oops, oh, just I had this conversation with Howard Scar when we went to see Hansi's wall of modulars. We had this idea that maybe we'd get some wallpaper made and we'd sneak in there in the middle of the night and we'd swap the hardware with the wallpaper because the rumour was it would take hands a little bit of time to catch up because obviously he uses mostly software now. To notice it had gone, you mean? Yep. Uh, <laughs> what do I think? I don't know. That is a... Th that, oh, I don't know whether, even whether I can lift this up or not. That is a thing of beauty and I absolutely adore it. It does. I tell you, the only play. thing about that is it really looks like there's another synth underneath a load of paper layouts that have been laid on top of it for patch no, patch right from here it does that's another one no they're, they're all beautiful all since well nearly all synthesizers are beautiful in their own right but i think this is really cool and i said to chris we should one year throw a christmas party and we should have like giant bits of wallpaper of synth stuff but not necessarily entire synth like modules blown up to massive amounts although there were a couple of people in there who were kind of hipsters and should be punished for being hipsters. <laughs> Those people with the doing the knob movements and stuff like that should just. They were there doing an EP. That, yeah, but they were there doing an EPK for some sort of uh, uh, music-related uh, activity. They can't oh, be. You know, they were just. They were just. They were just. You know, doing their job. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too harsh on them. Um, That's brilliant. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, it's really good, really good, really good, very good. And I got the chance to shout, John! Yes, you did. Uh, actually, I have to say, at the moment, this is looking pretty good as a contender for a thing of beauty, just as in terms of current, because I'm loving the bold statement. A lot of people, it's either, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. The uh, Dave Smith Instruments, um, oh, is it the Mofo? Uh, I've forgotten what it is now, but there's one that's the same sort of colour. I reviewed it. This is looking good for a modern one, but in terms of uh, older synths, mm, I'd, have, I'd have to think about that. I, I don't know whether you, Mike, are you are you a kind of veteran of the synthesis world? Have you got a little collection hidden away there, sort of your trophy uh, room? I used to have quite a few different types of synths, not a lot of old analogue ones. The only ever really old analogue one that I had was a, an Arp Solus, which came in a sort of suitcase, which was oh, yeah, a little baby. bit like the Odyssey. It was great. Um it used to ruin quite a lot of sound systems when you were doing some pretty mean filter sweeps on it. But I was I was always a big fan of when when companies like Valdorf did the Q when they brought out the big yellow Q. Oh yeah, I liked that. And it's a like, statement, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. And and Oberheim's OB12, the big blue one. I liked that. That was a nice synth. So anything with a bit of colour and and size. It sounds like you're going for really big synths. Basically, you'd love the uh, yeah. Schmidt, I think. I was a big fan of, of, of the JD-800 as well by Roland. I, I loved the way that was set out. It was a bit of a beast to carry about, but it was it was an awesome keyboard. And dare I say it, I was a bit of a fan of some of Quasimidi's things like the, the Sirius and the Raven and things as well. So Still Very collectible, I, highly regarded, actually, yeah. Yeah. I'm a bit of raver at heart, you see. That's why I liked all the bright colours. <laughs> 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 okay well um, uh, that's a good a very good selection um i know gas uh most beautiful uh, what do you think the fi the, the fismo that's an interesting oh, God, no. everybody the fismo you 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 <laughs> no, just said no, something so controversial no. you are likely uh, to get hate mail for 10 years no, for mentioning it was, that it, it was a joke it was a joke um <laughs> I, I was talking earlier about the uh uh, the Blofeld keyboard, and it's just a modern classic. That minimal look, very nice. The lines on it, the kind of the the pots, just the way they've used quite. You know, it's quite a simple thing, but I thought they'd done it very, very nice. Um, modern or well, hmm, that's the thing. It's a funny one, isn't it? Because uh, I I. I was interested to see what my girlfriend thought about this earlier, and I shown her lots of pictures of synths, and I asked her to. <laughs> and you're not getting married now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's off. The wedding's off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, 
so we were scrolling through some and she was like going oh yeah i like the look of that one a bit you know but most of the ones that she liked was um was the big moog or the big modulars you know she found them most uh appealing uh so um it is funny because you see the bigger they are and the more knobs they are on them, the, the more beautiful they appear. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but it's not really true, but it is. Size isn't so... everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, so many things. There's so many other gags we could just slip in here, but yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to restrain myself. I love the look of the fusion, the Elise's fusion. People hate it, but I love it. I think, the, you know, it reminded yeah. me a bit like a voxel dashboard. Yeah, but it was based on a dashboard, and and uh. like the, the the data entry wheel is actually based on a hubcap of a 1950s car, and they used like they used a, a 1950s car as a dashboard, and the profile is based on a wing of an aeroplane, so it's got this kind of. Oh, it's a nice, there's, there's a nice design aesthetic there. Uh, a couple mm-hmm. of suggestions in the chat room: uh, System 100 and 100M. Uh, OP1 gets a vote, and that does. I mean, it's a very clean yeah. design. The uh, teenager. Le- uh, um, engineer engineering one which uh we did review on yes it's very appealing looking looks lovely uh poly moog uh, sorry memory moog and the poly moog actually i like the look of that too that has a nice look um get a Mark hasn't gone yet, and I know he must have a, a strong feeling about synths that. Uh, and I'm suspecting old ones or new ones. I don't care. I Whatever, all of okay. them. Just let us new have it. New ones. Waldorf Wave. The Waldorf Wave was fabulous looking because it had a red knob on it. So yeah. anything that has red <laughs> yeah. things on it is good. And I really liked. I know this is going to seem like a weird thing to uh, say. The little tiny clavier Nord modular because it was a two octave keyboard, and then it was just so beautifully laid out. And again, it was red. Or the clavier with the wooden wiggly bit that was good. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, well when the yeah when the original Nord lead came out was it was it the Nord lead yeah it was wasn't yeah. it Nord yeah. lead yeah that was lovely uh, with the little stone modulation wheel yeah. and the wooden wiggly it's like bit. a pumice I mean, stone I like touches like that. <laughs> but um, old synths it has to be either the AKS synthy or the VCS three because they're just so weird. And they have like those big bacon like knobs on them, and then that kind of patch bay, like the battleships thing. They're just oh, yeah, no, they're beautiful. That's they are beautiful. Because it won't make a noise until you start patching things together. So that's a proper synthesizer. You have to understand the patch sheet before you can use it. And, you know, that means I'm doing the synthesis. Dave is showing off his, his synthy AKS there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have to cool. say, I have to say, Mark, I agree. In fact, I wrote an article uh, just last uh, beginning of the week about my uh, unhealthy desire for the Synthia AKS because it combines my love of luggage with my love of synthesizers. And uh, Dave has got <laughs> one. You got the sequencer, Dave. Yeah. Oh, oh my, um, my girlfriend did point out the uh, the Boeing, the John Boeing uh, Solaris. 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 She thought that looked lovely, and I thought, oh, yeah, that is actually a very, very attractive-looking synth, isn't it? Yeah. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Mm. There's lots and lots of them, aren't there? I mean, it, it's, it's kind of like basically everything. All shapes and sizes. <laughs> There's something yeah. about wood and knobs. I know that somebody's going to make a... <laughs> yeah, we, we, we don't oh, need to. It's all right. We don't need to. But there's something, you know, when you look at the Mini Moog and the Profit 5 and anything that's got that kind of combination, that the old, um, you know, the Moog modular and stuff like that. If you put a Moog modular old C3 or something like that next to a 2500, the Moog modular just looks so gorgeous and warm. And it's yes. that combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying there. I mean, essentially, anything with knobs on. It sounds like we're sort of we're terrible Lotharios. Anything with a pair of knobs and uh, a couple of patch cords and, you know, we're fine. Yeah, <laughs> I can sense there must be a show title coming out of it somewhere. I'll leave it to the chat room to throw in a few suggestions there and we can pluck it out for, for later. Um, but, uh, yeah, well, that feels like quite a good way to end. I mean, we could get into other stuff, but I think, to be honest, it feels like such a happy, a happy <laughs> upbeat time to leave. I think perhaps we could con- continue continue on those veins, you know, so uh, so perhaps we'll, 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 we'll quit while we're ahead. And, of course, um, we'll have the... Uh, oh! The Studio Logic Sledge coming along. Boss! Sometime soon. Is that really loud? Yeah. More sounds! More sounds. I, I, to be honest, I haven't actually flicked. It has hardly got any presets on this at all. It's ah. purely. I, I've just been working on the front panel, and that's pretty much it. Excellent. And it's, it sounds good. It's got. More! Oh. Hold on, let's see if I can find some. I have to. This is going to be tricky because I. 
Oh, that does a sound. Uh, yeah, I was going to try the wavetable. Because it's got all the... It's got all the digital waves in there on one of the oscillators. The other two oscillators... So this has got... Um, it's just not... You can hear that it's not beefy. I mean, it doesn't give you the fattest bass line in the world, but it's got a lot of... It reminds me a little bit, actually, Gaz, of that um, PPG kind of vibe. I mean, which, which it would, because it's, you know, the, the Waldorf thing is kind of based on the, the, the wavetable kind of uh, idea. But there is... The familiarity of the layout is um, what does it. Oh, and it's got... I like that. That's just a sine wave. I mean, this is all stereoized because it's been um, sent through the chorus. Let's try the phaser. <laughs> it's not stereoized for us, though, is it? It's Skype stereo. And there's a definite digital edge to it, but I don't really mind that because essentially it's so hands on. Sounds great. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Will you let me know when you start broadcasting in stereo? Because I've got a, a new friend. In fact, I'll go and get him. Hang on a minute. Uh, we do have stereo. I mean, we do, not to Skype. Skype isn't stereo, but the live stream is stereo. Um, in case uh, anybody wants to know. I mean, I think the YouTube does goes up in stereo. I mean, it should do. Mm -hmm. uh, assuming, uh, although I did find that uh, the first 10 minutes of the show were just the black screen output with audio, which I will remedy. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, this, oh, this young little... chap here is a little bit more interesting mm. than the cat. Oh, no. Harry. Is that a uh, uh, is that head, as it were, um, a it's mic a head? Head with binaural microphones in it. Yeah. Oh wow! It looks so good. I know it's cool, isn't it? It's very. Yeah. Uh, it looks a bit like. I could talk oh. in this ear here, and then I could spin him round and talk in this ear. But if you were Nathan. broadcasting in stereo and people were listening with headphones, then I could, I could talk behind his head and freak people out. What sort? What sort? What sort of head? Oh. What sort of dummy head is that? Is that a, a I legit one? You. Wow. Uh, what is it? It's, um, if I tell you, uh, you know what? I'm not going to buy another one now. So, uh, it's an AKG. Ah, uh, okay. Harry. H A W -R, R Y. Has it had the, the flesh stripped off it, as it were? Or is it, or is that, that ridged effect kind of what it uh, always had? Uh, no, this is like, it's like, a uh, furry, but he has lost a bit of flesh from his ear here. Ah, so it's like, someone it's like was whispering like sweet nothings and had a nibble on him. <laughs> <laughs> and then in there, they're dynamic microphones, and they're loaded up through the bottom there, and they're held in place by a circlip. And I haven't taken it apart yet, but I'm imagining that it sort of simulates the ear canal a little bit here as well. But I'm basically, I've, I'm going to make another one out of MDF, and then I'm going to experiment with different... Uh, I was talking to Gaz about this, actually. I want to put m and at the front here and then mix it with binaural and then have one down the back here as a, a back of the neck kind of microphone. Well, it's, it's in, what's interesting about that is the mm. for all the head being developed that way, the ear, actual ear, um, whatever it's called, ear yeah. flap, is really sort of uh, just just sort of, what do you call it? Look right? at his massive ears. Ah, well, it's, no, but you'd think that that would be the part that they would focus on kind of sculpting a bit more than, than that as it looks... Doesn't look, it looks like a cup holder or a crazy you'd, golf hole? <laughs> you'd, ex you'd expect some sort of latex thing happening there, wouldn't you? Maybe that maybe there was latex and latex as uh, as. as I, just... I wonder what the market for making an exact replica of your head for binaural microphones would actually be if there is a if that's my million pound idea taking sort of casts of people's heads. No, I imagine, I imagine to, pouring latex. Go talk to Sennheiser about it. They, they sold <laughs> them for about five thousand pounds. Uh, really? No, what? I mean, it, yeah. if it was actually, if it was actually, actually your, your head, head. With, with your ear mark, you know, yeah, love that. I had a, <laughs> a friend who was. Hold, hold on. Ball in the mouth, optional upgrade. That's a great line, isn't it? <laughs> 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 that's a, That's the gimp. The gimplication, obviously, is that in the. Like uh, a, well, that actually sounds like the title of the podcast as well. The ball in the mouth is the, yeah, it could be, couldn't ball it? Ball in the mouth optional upgrade. I mean, that sounds like... <laughs> this is rapidly descending into uh, stuff that generally happens below I stairs. Had, I had a friend uh, who was a model, and she uh, went to have a, a whole facial, facial uh, latex <laughs> thing. Uh, yeah. And Stop it. <laughs> I imagine it's quite uncomfortable and quite scary, actually. They, 
they covered her face in like some, you know, <laughs> I can't even go here now. No, I know what they, they, they'd have, they'd have like, to cover you completely in Vaseline, Vaseline, Vaseline so it didn't pull all your hair out. The mask of her face. So you can get it done. It does, it's not that expensive. So you could, uh, you mm. could make a latex head of yourself. Yeah. Head. Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, yeah, but I think latex would be too, wouldn't be dense enough, would it? You'd have to have, no. oh, that, no. I, it's sort of all getting a little bit kind of gruesome. And, um, you and, could cover it in bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's time to stop. This is just, it's, it can only get worse. There's no way this is ever going to get any better, is it? So, all right, well, we'll say our goodbyes. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, well, it's not actually X-rated, uh, HT, um, I think we managed to escape actually saying anything, particularly. It's your mind. HT. It's your your mind is X-rated. <laughs> yeah, you have a hell of a you have a hell of an imagination. About putting Vaseline on people's faces. That's all. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, and um, at, at that point, we'll say, Mark, that's very kind of you to share that information. I, I'm I'm really glad you showed us our your your huge massive furry head, as well. <laughs> really. <laughs> Uh, thank you, uh, Mark. Like Mark Tenley, like being dot com. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. That was uh, another great episode, and uh, thank you very much You're indeed. You're very welcome. Brilliant. And we'll also say, well, Dave's up there. Thank you to Dave Spears from uh, G4 Software. Thank you for joining us. Uh, much fun. You've become Please addicted to Skittles. Oh, sick. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I love sour. So, oh, we're flipping all over the place, right? I, I'm while, while Gaz is there, Gaz Williams. Uh, songsurgeon.co.uk uh, who's going to be enjoying maybe you can tell us a bit more about Ableton Live I did read your email it was quite hard to decipher while presenting a show but I think you ah. can talk about it but we haven't got time today so uh, okay. perhaps next week we can talk about that a little bit uh, more I, one sentence about it is that the MIDI the audio to MIDI is incredible Ah, maybe we can have a demo next week mm. beatbox <laughs> For some reason, my daughter, if anyone beatboxes or ha attempts to beatbox, she just has hysterics. She can't. She just, you know, she goes, Dad, Dad, go on, beatbox. I go, no, I'm not. It's just humiliating. All you want to do is laugh at me because I obviously cannot beatbox. So anyway, but um, that's actually uh, probably information that is uh, completely irrelevant. Anyway, Mike, Mike Greg, uh, Greg, uh, so if I say it properly, you'll have to speak to I enter the large uh, window. Oh, yeah. You. So I think this, this, thanks very much, guys. That was that was um, incredibly funny. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, uh, and I'm whether you'll be back or not is entirely up to you now. Obviously. Yeah, no, no, it's <laughs> crying, great. laughing. I've been I've been crying with laughter constantly. <laughs> I'm really ex really excited to hear what Gaz has got to say about Ableton Live because I'm very much an Ableton Live junkie myself. So um, yeah, let's hopefully we can slot something in like that next week that would be ace that would be fantastic yeah and uh, um uh anyway mike greg Miz, how do you pronounce that mizaru that's it's, that's your kind of corporate entity right it is indeed mizaru indeed Right. Well, there we go. That is the end of the show. Uh, I will apologise now for the uh, video blackout at the beginning because there won't be anything I could do about that. But if you put, if you if you have stuck with it, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, that was Sonic Talk number two hundred and ninety-four of all things. <laughs>